afternoon. My name is Tavia Danch, and I am the Community Outreach Manager at Colorado State University Global. Today, we will be talking about online education, what you can expect, and tips for achieving success. In the wake of COVID-19, we are all faced with so many unprecedented challenges, it's like how we can stay on our daily, weekly, and long-term routines and schedules. Online learning is a great option to stay on track toward achieving your educational goals. Whether you are unable to attend your home brick and mortar campus, or you're simply exploring the benefits of online learning for the first time, welcome. As a fully online state university, CSU Global is here to serve and support modern learners around the world. All classes and terms are continuing on their regular schedule. With that, we have a wonderful agenda, which includes what you should know about online learning, how online learning works, suggestions for online learning success, and after the presentation, we will have an interactive question and answer session. And just a little bit about that before we get started and so we can make this as engaging and interactive as possible. At the bottom of your screen, you will see a Q&A button. At any time during the presentation, please go ahead and submit any questions you might have there. And we will certainly do our best to answer those questions at the end of the presentation during that Q&A session. You'll also see a chat button there. Please feel free to introduce yourself Tell us where you're from, what you hope to learn, and please remember just to select all panelists and attendees in that dropdown. Finally, after the webinar, we'll send each of you a copy of this recording and a short survey for you to fill out so we can continue to improve and provide you with valuable information. I would now like to introduce you to Hannah Walden, Assistant Director of Student Success here at CSU Global. With that, I'll turn the time over to Hannah. Thank you, Tavia. Well, welcome everyone. I am so thrilled to be here with you sharing a little bit about online learning, also about CSU Global. And so to start, Tavia mentioned we have a chat feature. I would love for um, any of our guests um, who are attending, just to go ahead and type into that chat box, what is an online degree? So using your own words, what sticks out to you when you think of an online degree? that are coming in. Um, so an online degree is really thinking about a bachelor's or master's degree that's earned completely over the internet. And so um, online courses can be taken in many different forms and also span many different disciplines. So when we think about online classrooms, currently in this pandemic, a lot of people are especially experiencing all the way from kindergarten all the way up to a university level remote learning access. So this means that you have probably a traditional classroom that you've gone to, but now you're learning or using resources directly in your own home that you typically wouldn't necessarily be experiencing. Thinking about the flipped version of that is an online education that's completely dedicated to those um, types of learning and disciplines, and it's completely facilitated in an online environment. So what's important to think about when you're thinking about online education is accreditation. Accreditation is provided by a governing body that really makes sure that a university is providing the promises to students that it's saying it's going to. Accredited universities are respected and definitely thought about as many employers will want to know about accreditation. So in thinking about that, CSU Global is an accredited online education university that we provide our format completely delivered online. Another key piece to think about with online education is truly asynchronous and synchronous. So sync synchronous means we're doing it together. We're engaging in a conversation, we're sitting next to each other, or even maybe via video chat, where we're having an engaging dialogue. Asynchronous means that you are really facilitating that within yourself at your own home, but also you might be working in a many different formats. So asynchronous means that you're doing it by yourself, but you can have collaborations with peers, with instructors of those pieces, Synchronous would be what you think of a traditional classroom where you're sitting there answering on call and response questions from a faculty member. There's lots of benefits when considering an online education degree. The first one that probably pops into your head is flexibility. The ability to be at home if you have a job, you have kids, you have a family, maybe you're putting the kids to bed and you can get 
access to your reading or writing papers in the evening. Or if you're an early riser and you like to get up early before everyone else, you have the ability and the flexibility with an online education to figure out what works best for you. Maybe it's over your lunch hour or driving in the car while you're listening to automated um, pieces of your coursework, whatever that looks like. Flexibility is important. However, it's also important to remind you that even though it is flexible, there are certain dedicated due dates that you have to complete assignments and turn them in by. For example, here at CSU Global, we have due dates every single week. It's up to you to choose when you want to complete them and how you're going to complete them. That's where the flexibility really does come into play. Affordability. Online education really can pass those savings on to you as a student, as there's generally not brick and mortar, a lot of overhead costs that you would traditionally have in an on-ground university. So affordability is a key piece that comes to mind. Also really understanding what are the different financing methods that a university can offer you. And then future facing. We here at CSU Global have the ability to review our curriculum once a year, constantly making changes, adding future degrees to make sure that they are more competitive in the marketplace. Many times on a traditional university on ground, there's a lot of other pieces that they have to go through to review that curriculum. We have the ability to change on a dime and add new degrees as we're constantly going through and adjusting to the marketplace. So I'm thinking, how does online school really work? So it can be a little bit of a learning curve. I promise it's a small one, learning to navigate a virtual classroom. First piece is technology. So technology is going to look different, making sure that you have access to your email or using an online platform. These are often referred to as learning management systems, but every online university has its own way to provide you your coursework, to provide you communication between faculty, to provide you an area where you can submit your assignment. So the technology is generally very easy to use and is really self-explanatory. Interaction with classmates and faculty may look a little bit different in an online environment. Your faculty have an opportunity to be able to provide feedback on all your assignments that's done through our platform here at CSU Global, as well as you can gauge via that online platform or via email with other classmates. Or it's also an opportunity if you want to definitely work on a project and communicate over the phone with your classmates. So although you may not be seeing everybody at the same time, same place every single week, there is lots of interaction between your classmates and staff and faculty for that matter. All right, for example, our advising staff does many phone calls with students to really connect with them and engage with them on a personal level. It's also really important when you're finding assignments and when they're due. Each of our classes has a syllabus, just like you would have in any other class, with all of the assignments and due dates. So it's really important to make sure that you're thinking about all of those different pieces. And even though you get to pick on how you facilitate your academic coursework, it's really important to find out when those assignments are due. So in addition, as we're following up, we're going to be sending sample coursework in our follow-up email just to get you a real feel of what an online education could look like. It's also really important to know that outside what online education can provide you, there are many resources that have definitely adapted and kept up with the times. On the slide here, we have a few of them. So Quizlet is a really great feature for flashcards, prepping you, helping you take quizzes to become an, a better quiz taker. This is a free service that's offered to you. Evernote is one that I particularly love. I love to organize and it allows you to organize your notes in a way that would work best for you so that you can access them. It also works and streamlines on a variety of applications. So it's really helpful to kind of make sure that you're staying organized as an online student. And Bartley is a free website that really allows you to look at classics of literature, nonfiction or reference text. text. One thing that's important while you're scouring your online education, those remote, remote learning environments that we previously talked about, you don't have access to walk up to a library. Here at CSU Global, we have a 100% online library that's available to you at 1 p.m., 2 p.m., or even 4 in the morning. So it's always important to look at the different resources that exist within a university and how those are available to you. So here's some basic suggestions to think about online learning and what that success truly looks like. 
computer skills. It may sound pretty self-explanatory, but your online education is going to be online. So thinking about what are different internet browsers that you enjoy to use, if you haven't had an opportunity to try different ones, that's a great opportunity to make sure that you have all your favorites saved, you have all those different pieces available to you at the click of a button. One of them that's pretty simple that I know I love to use, I love to use a Google internet browser as it incorporates many of the different emails that I use on a personal basis. Thinking about it, you're going to have to turn in your assignments. You will have to write papers. So thinking about what are the different word processing platforms that you would like to use. Microsoft Office, I would highly recommend because not only do you get that Microsoft Word application, you can even develop PowerPoints if you need to submit or use Excel, which can help you create many different calculations on different assignments. Many of our accounting students are very familiar with Excel. So thinking about Microsoft Office, making sure that you have that installed on your computer, as simple as it sounds, but you're gonna have to turn in assignments. So making sure that you're prepared for that ahead of time and you know how to use those functions and features. Adobe Reader is amazing for viewing PDFs, saving files as PDFs, and also just kind of navigating that different world. Adobe is a really wonderful different program that can be loaded onto your computer um, that is super helpful. Most of our successful students often tell us just having these basic key features all ready to go prior to starting every term is one of the easy pieces that sets them up for success. A big, big piece of being an online student is time management. I've talked to many people over many of the years that said, I have great time management skills, but I like to procrastinate. There is no one there reminding you every single week in class that, hey, you need to log in and you need to submit your assignment or you need to log in and do your discussion post or interact with your different classmates. It's truly on you. So having accountability buddies or if you have a great support system at home of people that are really blocking off when you have class and school time, that can be really helpful. I find that my successful students are the students who block out a schedule, know exactly when school time is, and they also have a dedicated space to do that. You can see here, I'm in my office, I'm away from my TV, I'm not sitting here doing anything. That's the definite space that you wanna be, where you can set yourself up for success, free from distractions. Maybe that's a dog, or maybe that's a cat or even children or family. So thinking about what is a dedicated space where you are free from distractions, you have your time blocked out so that you can dedicate to your education. Education does definitely, you have, it has to be worked out in order to achieve that degree, but using these different pieces and setting yourself up for success is the number one way that you are going to be a successful student. In addition to all of these different resources, here at CSU Global, you have a dedicated student success counselor that's here to kind of walk you through those different pieces. And if you're coming up against a challenge, we have wonderful instructors and faculty that are willing to even hop on Zoom sessions or even just connect with you via email. So you have so many different levels of support outside of your own individual support circle. It may sound simple, but ask for help when you need it. Definitely, your faculty cannot read your mind, nor can your advisor, so always asking for help to say, I don't understand this, or I really need additional assistance. Your faculty are subject matter experts in their field, and they're really provided an opportunity to talk to students, to engage with them, and they love teaching, so that's what they're here to do, is to help you as a student. So, a key piece, as with many aspects and areas of life, asking for help is always the big key piece that you're gonna need when being a successful student. So thinking about all those computer skills, just even the basics, we can teach you the rest. Self-motivation and time management is so critically important, as well as having a dedicated space free from distractions and asking for all the necessary pieces of help that you need. As I've been talking about this, you might wonder, are online graduates successful? The answer is yes. So we have a variety of data here showing you that employers are overall satisfied with students, regardless of whether they have a brick and mortar, but they're online. So their education, just because it's online, is, is great, if not better than other students. Communication and organization, 
Our graduates definitely demonstrate verbal communication and organizing, planning, and written communication extremely well or very well. So just because you are doing this asynchronously and online, you're going to build those crucial skills that is going to help you be successful in your career. And then critical thinking is the number one thing that employers definitely want students to think about. How can you generate a problem and solve it and move forward to lead a company or to lead a division or even just be a leader within your industry? Our graduates definitely demonstrate use of technology, ethical behavior, as well as that critical thinking. This is all strung throughout our curriculum and all of our different pieces of areas of study. So it's important to think about not only are you just getting your degree, but you're getting a lot of these amazing life skills that are going to help propel you to the next level of your career. As we've thought about every single thing that we've talked about today, you know, thinking about how to be successful, is online learning perfect for you? And then are our graduates successful? All the data comes back to is yes. So as an opportunity, as part of our Q&A session, you'll have a chance to ask questions, get answers, and truly see if online education is a fit for you. So as you're thinking about it and thinking about all the degrees, I definitely want to invite you to even just talk with a member of our dedicated enrollment counselor staff. They are super helpful. Tavia is actually going to go through um, some information about how you can have an application waiver coming your way. But as you're thinking about this and as we're going through the Q&A, I definitely want to invite you to kind of think about and ask what are the most important questions that you need answered as becoming a member of an online education community? Thank you, Hannah, for your wonderful insights. I would now like to open the floor up to that Q&A section at the end. And as a reminder to um, submit a question, please click on that Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen and type in your question there. So let's get started on questions, Hannah. First question, how many hours should I expect to spend on, an, on one class each week? So that's a great question. And it, when it comes out, it's going to sound like a lot, but I want you to take all of the different pieces into consideration. So we generally recommend about 15 hours per class per week. And this can be divided up. You don't have to sit down and do all 15 hours at once. But all of this definitely comes from reading your coursework. If there's articles or books that you need to read, that goes into that. Even taking the time to write a paper. If you've been out of school for a bit, it's not necessarily as simple and as quick to sit down and write a paper or proofread. So thinking about all of that generally wraps up on average about 15 hours. So for many students that can depend if you're a quick writer or reader and can comprehend the information quickly, but it's also important to have dedicated time blocked out. Thank you. Next question. Yeah. Due to COVID-19, my school was closed. Can I enroll in CSU Global while my school is closed um, during the crisis? Absolutely. We have seen a number of students who are still looking to continue their education, and CSU Global is definitely here to do that. So that's a piece of talking to the enrollment team to sit, figure out what is your individual situation and what help and assistance you need so we can ensure that if you're taking credit with us that it would transfer back to your other institutions. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Will I be required to buy books or will they be provided online? So great question. Um, we have a variety of ways that students can get books with CSU Global. If you're like me and you love a physical book, it's certainly up to you and you can go buy that. We also have an online ebook system where you can rent them, buy them, um, some of the reference information is provided free of charge through the library, so it really depends on your class. However, our ebooks are really given to students at a discounted price, so we actually will um, provide them to you and sell them to you at a way cheaper rate than that. You would just be going to Amazon and looking for those books. So it's going to depend on the class, but much of the coursework is also included on our platform available to students. Great. And I know that you touched on this in the presentation, um, but maybe you could mm -hmm. expand a little bit more on how students are able to interact through, you know, the regular class structure at CSU Global. Absolutely. 
So in addition to just logging online to the online platform, we have discussion boards and discussion communications that happen every single week. As a student, you're required to log on, um, discuss what's happening that week or the topic of that matter. Your faculty members can respond to you. Other students will respond to you to really engage you in a discussion. So that's a participation piece of the class. However, um, in addition to just connecting with your classmates off outside of the platform via email, we really have a great communication strategy built into our discussion community so that you're engaging with your coursework in a critical manner. Wonderful. Yeah. Are there group projects? So it depends. It depends on the class that you're taking, I would definitely say. There's not a requirement of group work in every single class. However, there might be some more classes that are really based towards that. If you're doing different projects, we have a lot of different degrees like project management or pieces where there might be group work. It's not a requirement for every single class, but just like based upon um, the curriculum, there might be an opportunity for group work for students to meet um, uh, during a specific time, but it's not required. And on that note, uh, public speaking, I know that's a big thing at um, <laughs> in uh, classes. So how is that incorporated at CSU Global? Yeah, so since we don't have a, a class, if you will, that we're sitting down at every week, so sometimes there are video assignments where we ask students to spot, respond verbally, but you're not going to have to give a speech up in front of an entire class or if that's something you're con concerned about. But we do incorporate other different places that you're able to kind of connect, but you won't be required to public speak in front of everyone. Great. How can I find out if a university is accredited? Great question. So every single university who is accredited can definitely and will put that information on their website. That's also something I encourage students as they're going through the enrollment process to ask your enrollment team about what is the accreditation and who are they accredited through. CSU Global is a regionally accredited university, which is really important because that means it's from the large accrediting body of major universities. So really understanding what accreditation looks like and have that enrollment team definitely explain it to you because it's important. The internet is your friend when it comes because you can also Google and also find out what types of accreditation is out there for which university. Great. Next question. How long does it take to complete an online bachelor's degree? So great question. That really all depends um, on you as the student. If you're taking a, for full time purposes, if taking two classes a term, we also run off of trimesters here. So we have three trimesters in a year and within the trimester, there's generally two available terms for students. So being full time, it can be completed, you know, if depending upon the degree in two to three years, or if you just need to, based on your life, take more time, it can definitely, you know, range out to three to four. So it really depends on you as a student in the speed in which you are able to take classes and move through your degree. We offer courses year round, so there's never a need that you have to take a break or take a summer off, you can definitely continue your education and move through it at a quicker pace than you would at a traditional university on the ground doing semesters. Wonderful. How long does the enrollment process at CSU Global take, generally speaking? So once again, I hate to sound like a broken record, but it does depend. If you are able to request your transcripts and fill out the application, um, we have terms that really start every six to eight weeks, so there's really an ongoing period that you can. Um, we just started a term now, and so the next term um, will start soon. So that's where you can work with your enrollment counselor. If you know, like, I want to fill out the application, I've already requested my transcripts, they can move you through the process as quickly as you possibly can if you would like to get started for our next term. So. Overall, it can be done at a really rapid pace, um, depending upon if you're able to request those transcripts or the documents needed. Additionally, a key piece to think about is financing. Um, if you're interested in financial aid, filling out that FAFSA and working with our student financial services team is another key piece of the enrollment process. So as engaged as you are is how quickly we can move you through that process. 
Wonderful. And also just a reminder there, um, if there's information on the slide, if you are interested in contacting an enrollment counselor and also that um, code for an application fee waiver if you're interested in CSU Global. Um, yep. Next question, are there scholarships available through CSU Global and how do I find out information about that? Absolutely. So we have a um, whole web page that's dedicated to scholarships. Your enrollment counselor is going to be the key one that can talk you through that. Something to also keep in mind if you're military or we do have certain discounts that are available to students. Another key piece I would have you think about is if your employer is affiliated with CSU Global, you can find that on our website where discounts can be offered as well. So I would really, as Tavia mentioned, um, email enroll at csuglobal.edu. We can get you connected with a dedicated enrollment counselor that will walk you through the process as well as talk to you about scholarships or what certain discounts that you may be eligible for. Wonderful. And this is our last question. For freshmen and sophomores in high school, I'm able to finish the work in my classes in about an hour, and an hour to an hour and a half every day or shorter. Should it be taking me 15 hours a week at CSU Global, or is that just a recommendation that you provided? So great question, a little clarification. If you're taking those different classes or if it's dual enrollment, you obviously have the time that you are doing that in class and you have dedicated class time that you're working on that. At a coll collegiate level, there's going to be kind of another step up of um, education that you're providing. And a lot of times we have students who are working full time in addition to having a family. But if you're a freshman student and all you're doing is class, it might take you less time if you can dedicate that out. So. It completely depends on your um, level, but also your time management that you're able to block out. So all of those pieces come into recommendation. We find on average, many of our students spend 12 to 15 hours per week on classes in addition to all the other things that they have going on in their life. However, if school is the one thing that you're doing, it's probably going to take you less time because you can dedicate specific amounts of time to it. A big thank you, Hannah, for your time and the information you provided today. If you're interested in experiencing an online course, we will also include a link for Global Learn. Global Learn is a collection of short-term, non-credit-bearing classes that are free or low cost, and it's a great way to experience online learning and determine if it's a right fit for you. And with that, thank you. Thank you to all of our viewers here today. We hope you found this conversation informative and useful. On behalf of everyone here at CSU Global, thank you so much and have a great rest of the day.